So Dr. Schultz, today we're talking about biopsies, which is a huge topic in prostate cancer. And so one of the questions that we have from our YouTube comment section is, can biopsies cause like any sort of nerve damage? Is there any risk? There is, uh, of course, there are different types of biopsies. When we talk about biopsies generically, usually we're talking about the 12 core random biopsy where they kind of go around the clock and <clears throat> try and hit every area of the prostate. And uh, there's a pretty solid literature showing that um, men can have usually transient or reversible erectile dysfunction after biopsies. Maybe it happens in as many as up to a third of men that have random biopsies. And um, it's thought that this corrects over time within a couple, three months. But I've had some patients who have uh, let me know that they think they've had some permanent damage from a random biopsy. I don't think it's very common, but it can happen. So when it comes to biopsies and the results, many uh, graphs use percentage of cores positive. So how does this, how is this affected with targeted biopsy? Before we had PSMA PET scans, we were always trying to estimate the possibility of microscopic spread outside the uh, prostate. And we would use factors like how high is the PSA, how high is the Gleason score. And when they did the around-the-clock biopsy, they'd say, well, how many cores had cancer in them and how full were those cores when they looked at them under the microscope? And all of those were jumbled into a formula and then it would spit out a percent likelihood that there's something outside the prostate because the scans, uh, the bone scans and the CAT scans were so poor at detecting things outside the prostate. Now with the advent of PSMA PET scans, which are much more accurate at detecting uh, early metastatic uh, spread outside the gland, I think that these uh, these factors are less important. Prior to the advent of PSMA PET scans, we would use a uh, good quality multiparametric MRI to get a sense of how big the tumor is. And if you think about it with these random biopsies, if you have half of the cores involved, that's a, we'll say, a small to medium-sized tumor. If it involves all the cores in the prostate, then you're looking at uh, a larger tumor. And the size of the tumor does softly indicate whether it's more likely for disease to be outside. But that um, information, I think now, is mostly superseded with the, uh, the newer PSMA PET scans. When it comes to you know, getting a biopsy, is there any chance that the needles could cause scar tissue or any ED? I know we talked about nerve damage, but are those also factors? Well, I think uh, the risks of uh, the biopsy, besides transient ED, is uh, you know, short-term serious infections occur. And then there is an incidence of um, lingering what we call prostatitis. Prostatitis is a common problem in men that even have, that haven't had biopsies, but it seems that some men, if they do get an infection after a random biopsy, then in a small number of cases, that can kind of be an ongoing problem. Uh, sort of a chronic prostatitis situation can occur after random biopsy. If your PSA is increasing, does that mean that there's going to be more frequent biopsies, like every time the PSA increases, we're going to get biopsies? Or maybe even if the PSA is staying stable, we just get one? How do those factor out in comparison to each other? Well, I think this question relates to the evolving technology, because historically, the random biopsy was the only technology we had to try and find out what's going on inside the prostate. So we've had random biopsies since the early 1990s. And yes, when men would come in with uh, elevated PSAs, uh, we would do a random biopsy. And if it missed something, we would repeat the random biopsy. Uh, it's well known that random biopsies miss about 20% of cancers when they're present. And so by going back and randomly stabbing in different parts of the prostate, uh, eventually uh, the underlying problem would be discovered. This methodology, I think, now is antiquated because we have uh, good quality MRIs, we have good quality ultrasounds, we have um, PSMA PET scans, and uh, which not only these PSMA PET scans not only can determine what's outside the prostate, but they can also look uh, as to whether there's something inside the prostate and where what part of the prostate, where it's located. So I think the idea of um, for men on active surveillance or even newly diagnosed men with high PSAs uh, using biopsies over and over again uh, seems like a counter productive and somewhat risky methodology. Can you outline the difference between transperineal and transrectal biopsies? Because of the concerns about uh, infections where the needle passes through the rectum into the prostate, which is the traditional methodology used to do uh, prostate biopsies, uh, more recently the uh, technology has been developed for the uh, needles to not go through the rectum but to go through the perineum, which is the skin between the scrotum and the anus. 
It's a longer uh, distance to get to the prostate, but since it doesn't go through the rectum, the in risk of infection will be much lower. So the advantages of transperineal biopsies is much less likelihood of serious infection. Uh, the disadvantage is that it, it's a little bit more involved because you're targeting from a greater distance, and uh, in some cases you're going to need anesthesia to um, uh, compensate for the discomfort because the needle's passing through more normal tissue. But both methodologies are uh, workable, and uh, perineal biopsies uh, are a bit more involved, but do have the advantage of a lower infection risk. How much time does it take in a transperineal biopsy versus a transrectal? Well, I think it's uh, all these things are, of course, dependent on the skill of the doctor. Uh, and if, uh, if you're doing a targeted biopsy where you're only taking a couple cores, that's much quicker than doing a 12-core random biopsy or even a 15, 18-core random biopsy, which is sometimes done in men with larger prostates. And then if uh, someone is uh, going to be undergoing general anesthesia, there's a whole process involved with that. And it's not just the time involved during the biopsy, but it's also all the preparation time, uh, the setup, and the, uh, you know, the logistics of getting everything arranged. So a biopsy can be like, almost like a minor surgery if someone's going to be put to sleep. Many people are concerned that having a biopsy could possibly cause the spread of cancer. Is that something to be concerned about? No, I don't think so. I think the spread of cancer is dependent on the type of cancer, not whether an or not a biopsy is performed. Data now shows clearly that you can detect cancer cell DNA in the blood, um, you can detect cancer cells in the blood, but the issue isn't the presence or absence of cells getting outside the gland. The issue is does it have the genetic capacity, the biologic capacity to, uh, to land somewhere and grow in a distant organ. That takes a certain type of bad prostate cancer cell. Unfortunately, uh, most prostate cancers don't have that capacity, and those that do, um, they, can, they don't need a biopsy to spread. They can spread even without a biopsy. So with the advent of PSMA PET scans, does it make sense that somebody would have imaging before they get a biopsy? Uh, it makes sense to me. This, of course, it doesn't make sense to insurance companies, and these, uh, these scans are fairly expensive. If cost was no object, I would, and I had a high PSA or an MRI suggesting an abnormality in my prostate, I would prefer to have a PSMA PET scan and see if that little abnormality lights up, which would signify that it is indeed a cancer, and then uh, undergo a targeted biopsy just to find out what the grade is. I think it makes a lot of sense, but these scans are quite expensive, and uh, insurance companies have been balking at paying for them unless someone already has a biologic or a pathologic diagnosis of cancer. So um, other than the insurance barriers, yes, I think it would make a lot of sense to do a PSMA PET scan before a biopsy. Thanks so much for watching. If you would like more information about prostate cancer and all sorts of education, you can visit our website, pcri.org, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer education videos every week.